All right, today I will be testing the RTX 3080 Founders Edition from NVIDIA against their own RTX 2080 Ti. Both of them will be benchmarked on the exact same test bed with a 16 core Ryzen 9 3950X. The question is, how much faster is the RTX 3080 than the RTX 2080 Ti? Assuming it is faster, and what the value or frames per dollar of these cards are given their price tag, with the RTX 3080 FE at $699 and the RTX 2080 Ti priced at roughly $1,200. The huge price difference is one of the reasons why folks who recently purchased an RTX 2080 Ti ahead of the Ampere announcement are kind of freaking out right now, but you can watch our recent video on that for more details. Ugh, oh, there's something in my eye. Power through it. Power through it. Before that, this video was sponsored by the ASRock Z490 Steel Legend. Supporting 10th gen Intel Core processors, the ATX board features an 11 phase Dr. Moss power design and supports up to DDR4 4266 memory. Future ready for PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drives and GPUs, the Z490 Steel Legend sports an M.2 slot for onboard Wi Fi and Dragon 2.5 gigabit LAN for exceptional networking performance. Elevate your listening experience with virtually any audio device using the included Nehemic software and customize the board's RGB lighting easily within Polychrome Sync. For more details on the ASRock Z490 Steel Legend, click on the link in the description below. I also wanted to test the RTX 3080 with a Ryzen 5 3600 because it's a super popular 6-core CPU, and I'm sure a lot of you are probably wondering if or how much it'll bottleneck the RTX 3080. Since my Ryzen 3600 samples are all in use at the moment, I tested the 3080 with a Ryzen 5 3600 XT downclocked to 4.1 GHz on all cores to simulate an overclocked Ryzen 3600. Most 3600s should be able to easily hit 4.1 GHz on all cores. If your 3600 falls within about 100 megahertz on either side of that, your results will still be very close to the ones you're about to see. By the end of the video, the data will show if Ryzen 3600 owners can reasonably upgrade their GPU to an RTX 3080 without leaving too much performance on the table. Now looking at my test bed really quick, I ran three different configurations today. As mentioned, I tested the RTX 3080 and RTX 2080 Ti, specifically the Aorus Extreme model from Gigabyte, with a stock 3950X that boosts to 4.7 gigahertz. And I also tested the RTX 3080 with the downclocked 3600 XT to see how the card performs with a $200 Ryzen CPU. All the hardware you see on the right was used for all three configurations. Now, before we dive into the performance benchmarks, we have a few things to discuss, including what I know you're the most excited about, power draw. Joking aside, this is actually pretty interesting. In the graph, you can see that when paired with the 3600 XT, the RTX 3080 system draws significantly less power than it does with the 3950X. For Ryzen 3600 owners, that means if your PC has at least a 550 watt unit that's good quality and 80 plus certified, you can probably run an RTX 3080 with no issues as long as you're not trying to do any extreme overclocking. If you're building a similar PC from scratch, however, I would recommend at least a 650 watt unit for good measure. For users with more power hungry CPUs, 550 watts clearly won't cut it. So you'll wanna make sure that you're using a power supply with enough overhead. Nvidia officially recommends a 750 watt unit for the RTX 3080, but the testing here shows that you can probably get away with less than that depending on your CPU. Here we can also see that the RTX 3080 consumes slightly more power than the RTX 2080 Ti by about 4%. When it comes to thermals, the new cooler design for the RTX 3080 Founders Edition wasn't fantastic, but it performed adequately, hitting a maximum of 79 degrees Celsius under load. That's a couple degrees cooler than what we saw the RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition do, which is a welcome improvement. More impressive, however, is the new cooler's acoustics. Throughout my testing, the RTX 3080 stayed nice and quiet, and I never felt it was too loud, even with it two feet away from me on an open air test bench. In fact, most of the time, I couldn't really hear it over the radiator fans on our Kraken AIO, and it actually ran and noticeably quieter than the Aorus RTX 2080 Ti. That being said, we'll have to wait and see how the thermals and noise of aftermarket RTX 3080s compare to Nvidia's Founders Edition. Blah, 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 blah. That brings us to the moment you've really been waiting for, performance. I'm gonna run the graphs with some music so you can view them at your leisure, but stick around afterwards as we'll be discussing the value proposition of these GPUs and what this all means for Ryzen 3600 owners. So without further ado guys, here are the benchmarks.
So after running all the tests, I combined the average frame rates across all six games to give us an overall snapshot of performance. And at 1080p, the fastest configuration today was the RTX 3080 paired with the Ryzen 9 3950X. But that's only about 1% faster than with our simulated Ryzen 3600, which costs about $500 less than the 3950X, making it the more sensible CPU for gaming by a large margin. Both of these pairings beat out the RTX 2080 Ti and 3950X by around 7 to 8%, which isn't a huge gain, but when you consider the price of the RTX 2080 Ti, it really puts things in perspective. At 1440p, the rankings stay the same, but here we see the RTX 3080 pull further ahead of the 2080 Ti, with the 3600 XT build delivering 12% more frames on average, and the 3950X build netting around 15% more performance. Now we're talking double digit gains over the 2080 Ti, as it continues spiraling downward into a pit of irrelevancy. The final nail in the coffin though comes at 4K, with the RTX 3080 besting the 2080 Ti by a whopping 20%. If consumers were happy about the RTX 2080 Ti opening up the doors to 4K gaming, they should be doing backflips right now to honor the RTX 3080's arrival, as it puts the RTX 2080 Ti to shame at this resolution and easily hits 70 to 80 FPS on average in AAA titles at max settings. Ryzen 3600 owners should also celebrate with an acrobatic movement of their choice, as the data shows the RTX 3080 pairs beautifully with the $200 chip, which should be a reminder of just how capable the 3600 really is. As a way to compare the value of the RTX 3080 and RTX 2080 Ti, here's a breakdown of the frames per dollar you get with each GPU, given their price of $699 and $1200 respectively. The numbers are astounding. At 1440p, which will likely be the sweet spot for RTX 3080 owners, the Ampere GPU offers literally twice as many frames per dollar than the 2080 Ti. It packs even more value at 4K. At this point, buying an RTX 2080 Ti should only be considered if buying used for an insanely low price. I mean, even at $500, the RTX 2080 Ti might not be worth it depending on what the upcoming RTX 3070 can do when it launches in October. That's gonna do it for now, guys. As always, let me know your thoughts down below and whether or not the RTX 3080 has lived up to your expectations. Just like I know all of you will live up to my expectations by smashing that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe for more RTX 3000 series content on the way. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next video.